had the exceptional experience. <laughs> yeah, it's, but it's a good, it's a good experience. I mean, it's that step that what I hope you know, fair is good. I'm hoping to take that as young people to life-changing experiences, and it may be you know, understanding the world. So there are common people over there that need a bathroom. There may be a different bathroom and eat different food, but they're still humans that have a lot of natural things. And sometimes I think just. That awareness is important where some of those exchange programs came out of World War II, just mm -hmm. trying to address some of those needs. So. Mm -hmm. It's been all of it. It's been <laughs> Well, you'll hear from us again if anything gets started. Because if you notice in the risk, uh, we're probably going to be used you know, keep us posted. Maybe we all we we know other commissioners if, if there's kind of that you want us, you know, talk with. Mm -hmm. I could be willing. We all know somebody in you know, multiple counties. So and yeah, you know commissioners in other counties, and it, it's such a, if you want to visit with the director of a district from a commissioner standpoint, so we can direct you that way. I mean, like the David Keith of Neemahaw County. Um, K-State, they always like to be make, keep themselves available. So Dale CL, our area director, uh, certainly can be available and wasn't sure that it was his best use of his time to drive up to Atchison today, drive back to Manhattan for what we thought was going to be a very congenial conversation and it, and it seems to be. Uh, so Dale CL is there willing and waiting. Another one, Jim Lindquist is another, uh, what do you call him, a specialist. Jim's probably more of a specialist on districting than even Dale PL, like mainly from a taxing standpoint, uh, how you look at those things, programming, uh, how districts have gotten set up, and there's, oh, to say there's templates uh, on and time frames as far as how districts have gotten get set up, meaning there is a benchmark, what, July 1st is when districts can be formed that first year, and then they become a tax in any of the following year, I believe. So there are you know, there are laws that govern districts, as we do extension councils, extension I boards, and single counties. I, I would think that the agents would talk to other agents to see if there's any interest, because we can talk to commissioners, and, and they're going to say, well, we'll talk to our agents if they're interested. Yeah. So I'd say that would be a starting point, and then you come back and say, you know, they could be interested. You know, people that they're county's commissioners. Oh, we talk. I mean, about that. <laughs> How's your district going, or you know, the others that are bad. So, it, but it's not that formal board, and that's what they really want to keep you aware of, as far as they have not. Um, they just not been out looking for anybody to join with the district at this point in time. They just really want to keep you aware that uh, it certainly is on the table as uh, we look down the road, or as they're looking down the road. Okay. Yeah, and I think the fact that you're continual to it and encourages where, you know, if we came today and you guys were like, absolutely not, then it would be a lot of effort for the board. We need to sell you on that concept first and then go out and look. And I think that, you yeah, know, that's the value here is so let's see that we're on the same page. If we are, he gives us the encouragement to go ahead and maybe start holding that discussion. More. Because I know there's talk going on with that in other counties too, but we've just not brought that together yet, but we wanted to make sure we had a feel as to where you, how you look at this work before we opened that up. So, do you have any questions or comments back? No, I. It's an April 1st for district, if I'm yeah. not ta for the taxing side. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, well there, so you guys have been to the statute for. Oh, for okay. Okay, that's your side. Yes. Yeah. So I think if you go into the district, then there's a 60-day approval by the Attorney General to go into it. So a July 1st, then you have to back that up to do that, and then there's kind of a... Is that Any other questions? Me? Okay. Well, thank you. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I do have a good trip. I'm going to be careful, Larry. Yes, you can. Where's your first night?
Totally. Good one? Yeah, it'll be cool.
Well, it is a sort of animal that they do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so basically it's like... You don't have a statue that will not be a cat? Uh, I get it, I think. What, what is it? That one was 2-something. Two 2-623. Two
Okay. Yes. Matt will go, I assume, that's for our original. Yep. Who gets that? Pauline? Yep. Yeah, I guess. You want me to give her the paperwork? Sure. Okay. Uh, so that's going to be your copy of that two years ago. Yeah. yeah. I was on vacation. See, he was having a complication before that. He'd been sick for like six months ago, but you'll need to put the title on. Got it. 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 Got it.
other boards as far as the public election where those persons that are interested to be on the district board file, I believe, with the county clerk, and pay the, I think there's probably a filing fee, and uh, become on that public ballot. And that would be helped probably in the spring along with school board election. Yeah, I'd like to say, as I've been on this board, I, I can see, and I was a bit skeptical as to whether this was necessary, but as I see the, as the future grows for this area of Kansas is going to continue, we need to consider ourselves more than, and I don't want to say just 4-H, but so many people look at, at the extension as 4-H primarily. And when you look at the involvement that we have with so many other programs and, and the need there that we can be involved in, the, the helpful living issues, the, uh, the food quality issues, uh, are, are things outside of 4-H in general. Uh, you have two Asians who are covering a lot of diverse areas. Uh, when you look at the, uh, the districts that form, uh, they open up and have a number, they have several several uh, agents, but they all more or less specialize in certain areas. So those agents can spend more of their time in specialty areas, and I think that is key to improving the quality of what we can offer to the community. Because not that, I think these folks are doing a great job, I don't see how they do what they do, to tell you the truth. Uh, because Atchison County needs more involvement from just, not just the 4-H program, but a lot of other things. But if we were a part of another district where we could tap into specialization and have access to more agents, of course they would also be spending time in other, other areas as well, but they would be far more focused, and I think that would bring a higher quality and an added value to what we can bring to the county. So uh, it's, it's, And I can see that in the Meadowlock district as they operate, uh, how they, they function. The efficiencies are there, but uh, it, it's not really the efficiencies, it's more the value added uh, approach that we can take and say here's what we can do for the county and help improve the overall quality of our, of our, uh, of our services that, that we have. And we'll have to continue to expand those. Thank you. Thank so, Basically, you're explaining to keep us in the loop, but it sounds like you just had some internal discussions. Yeah. And, like, so where do you go from here? I mean, do you just, I mean, talk more publicly, or do you survey? Do you just start talking with our counties? I mean, how, where do you guys, what's kind of your plan from here? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, really, um, with this, we designed a, a road map. Sure. Um, as to how to proceed. Right now, I think what we're looking at is is there any interest in um, to part of uh, districting with us? You know, in the past, over the last seven years, Donovan County has been brought up, and Brown County, and Brown County. Tampa, it's never really gone anywhere. Um, but I think the thing is, as we move forward, I, there are other counties that are in the same boat as us. And our point is to be prepared to open into some discussions with other counties to see what possibilities exist. We haven't taken that step yet, but we certainly wanted to inform you of where this is starting to move so that if that opportunity comes about, we can then look at those counties that might be best as partners, whether it be you, know, you add to the existing district or you form an, another district. Whatever would be best for, for us uh, as we can see. We, we haven't taken that next step yet, but the thing is, is to start with you folks and make sure you're in on the loop on it and get any feedback you may have for us concerning, because we have issues, there are risks involved here, of course, mm -hmm. and we need to identify those and we need to understand how to, to moderate through those. So. We'd sort of like your input on that as we move forward, but uh, you know, that we really haven't taken that next step yet, but it could be coming down the road. So. Yeah. Mike's, uh, Mike Fisher uh, Bowden has his ICD night here today. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, you're right. I mean, I think when I was in the extension board, it was 
slightly discussed. Or there was that was when Metal Arc just became a district. Or I mean, that's been put a few years back. But I mean, so it's nothing new in the state. But uh, uh, how many? I'm curious. How many districts are there in the state now? I thought I'd seen a map one well back in the day. I know they added some down in South East, Northwest Kansas, which is pretty much, there's a few counties in left that are pretty much the district, Southwest, it's probably the, I don't know if there's any districts, but I mean, district, gosh, when I was an agent and came to Epson County from Western Kansas, Lane and Ness and Rush County, it's probably been 20, Years ago, had had district at that point in time to combine those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a concept that's been around for a while. So, yeah, and so there were a whole, there weren't a whole lot when I was when I was Yeah, early on, I think it was that's what Walnut was Creek, right? Creek, and then Post Rock was two for several years. So the last, they just recently last July would have took in Smith County into that district. They were up. They went from two to four, and now they're at five. Russell and Ellsworth County just formed a district in July. And there's, so that shows 12 as of 2012, so. Uh, yeah, so there would be, so there's probably Wildcat. Another two there. Yeah, so there's probably almost getting 20 because uh, Wildcat down in Southeast, which would be Crawford, Montgomery, and there's another one in that district, I'm trying to say. In, no, that is the so it's 15? Oh, it's 15. Yeah. Joanne, yeah. Joanne yeah. bless her heart, she's on the state <laughs> advisory, yeah. and uh, she had that chart with her. Yeah. And her, that is July 2012. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, yeah. a, so that's a full year. Yeah. Ellsworth yeah. and Russell, I think it was just formed this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ellsworth mm -hmm. and Russell, and I think Wild, it's Wild Cat on there down the Yeah, down the south. south east. Okay. What's my name? Brown, I have to see that Donovan will go in the middle of it. Or does that get too big? Well, you do have to be careful there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> next, you know, that's the thing as far as is, as the board and as other people have input, it gets to be what are the pros, cons, of which direction you look, and and so is joining the Metal Art District uh, like, as far as having to be six six counties. Six. Uh, uh, yeah, it's had the board and others decide, look at those things. Yeah, I mean, you do. Is that a good size? Is that a good mix? Does that allow the uh, Art District to even split there and have more specialists? And, um, mm -hmm. so it's, at this point in time, as the board is sharing all options on the table. Meaning there's nothing as far as this is their first choice necessarily, and nobody at this point in time. On the 24th of September, nobody has contacted, no county or district has contacted Exton County lately, as far as that. So what you're saying is you would rather really take Brown, Ashton, and Donald from the middle? I can't yeah. say why I would rather see Bill, I'm not going to be <laughs> here. Never, <laughs> never, never, never. <laughs> that could be a possibility that we would want to evaluate that first to see if that would be to everyone's best interest, and especially our interest. And that's why we want to be a player from the beginning on this if that does start to open up. Because we need to have a say in that. Is it, is it to Atchison's best interest to partner here or there or not at all? So, uh, But we would have to evaluate those. But that has to be approached first. And that well, it'd it have to be just around the county. You just couldn't, oh, jump, sure. you right. couldn't jump here. Jump After, here. It's yeah. going to have to be some of those. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah the law doesn't require them to be contiguous. But I mean, oh. this, I think, for yeah. functioning purposes, I mean, you could take Donovan County and Morton County and Norm in the district, but it's just not going to be a practical district. So it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't be practical from an efficiency standpoint. No, I mean, yeah. Does that help out? I know, like, we're blessed in this county with agents that have been with us for a while, but I know there's there's usually turnover in some county, even like some to the north of it. Seems like there's been agents. Sure. They have trouble keeping agents. I guess does that help the districts like help alleviate that, or does it really not even make a difference? I mean, as far as the number of agents, I would. I don't know if they could statistically support that, Jeff, or, or not. He would think so. I don't know statistically either, but the fact that there would be a broader opportunity for agents yeah. to be specialized would probably, I don't know what the reason for turnover is. If it's because I'm, I've got so much diversity 
I can't really focus on any one thing that brings frustration, that's possible. I don't know that to be the case at all. Sure. And that may be part of it, but this, I would think, helps me be a summer. Yeah. Bill, typically, as Manhattan, and they have what they consider some specialties, they help boards as they look at and analyze their options as far as they will suggest you look at oh, several of the programs for the population. Um, you probably do look at even travel patterns uh, somewhat. And not to say that districting, you have programs that people travel from their home county to another county in the district. Some there would be and others it's still, and when I'm, I'm not going to say it's the same as it's always been, but there will be changes. Um, but as K-State gives input and boards look, you do look at similar programs, similar needs of surrounding counties or districts. And you try to, well, I mean, it is that crystal ball looking as far as what you think is the best match for down the road. And um, so, so do you look for a county that has high average? Possibly, yes, if you come here comes to your advantage. Do you look at a candidate that has low evaluation? Possibly, yes. It may have similar needs, similar programs, and uh, so even evaluation becomes, that population basis becomes part of how you look at things, similar programs, uh, whether they're the uh, family consumer science programming or agriculture programming or youth programming. So uh, there's, oh, it, it's hard to just look at a map. I mean, it's easy to look at a map. Oh, yeah, here's Here's those counties that are not district yet, that's just go ahead and automatically say, that's what I'll be a good district in. K-State's not here. K-State's not here today and I represent K-State. But that would probably be an easy answer for them to say, yeah, that gets our counties and districts, which is what they want. But still, it needs to be what is the best fit for Atchison. And, and, and that's hopefully the leadership of the board. And as you well know, Jeff, we change board, board memberships and that may go. So you do have that. Learning curve for every new member and every board. How, how are you going to sell this? Because evaluation can be every county. What are you going to say to them that will benefit them? Right. Of course, why do you want an extra county? Lower, lower evaluation. So, uh, whether it's. Yeah. Whether it's well, they they have have I mean, they look at why it's fast turnover. Sure. Yeah. 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 So, they look at why that county. Well, and I think that's true. The longevity or age is, is an attraction for someone like that, for instance. They have a bit of a more urban population than we do, so they have some programs that focus there, but they, if they can specialize more with a more rural agricultural side, it could be a nice blend. I mean, uh, those are the things we need to go down once we identify potential partners and, and, and find those out, because there's, like like said, there's a huge number of things to evaluate, see if it's, if it's a go or uh, worthwhile issue. And then probably the other piece that comes in that mix is you look at from a level where, you know, they've got their other neighbors are Wyandotte, Johnson, Douglas, and jo and Wyandotte. Um, I think Leavenworth looked at something a few years ago and their unified government wasn't interested in that districting concept. So that kind of, at that time, politically, it wasn't the right decision to make now. They could go maybe to Wyandotte county tomorrow and they might say that's the right decision to make, but some, I think district sometimes it's that magic that all comes together at the right time and place to, to form a district. Yeah. If you're on board, I mean, I don't know if you that be your blood thing or you just want to make us aware of it. Because well, you have your own board, board so we don't, you don't report to us at all. No, no, we, we want you to be aware of it. Okay. And okay. We, we, uh, we would appreciate any input that you've been given us here on your thoughts on it, but absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're kind of doing that similar type of situation. We're trying to form kind of a district through some counties mm -hmm. to get better purchases. Yeah. And we have, what, eight or nine counties? Yeah. So as far as the rest of the county, the times are going to demand it. And the other piece is really as the board discusses the district, then they'll come back, and you might have talked about that earlier, but you'll come back to it, so you as commissioners will have that say of districting, and so if you're against the districting policy, then that'll be a, we'd have to do a lot of sales to use it to get to that next place. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I've heard comments, why don't the district? Why don't the yeah. district? So yeah. I'd say you have our, you have my support. Yeah, my support too. Well, that's, that's we've talked about it for, you know, to talk about it, discuss a 
little bit over the years. I mean, it seems like um, I'm just more familiar with metal art. So I've talked with them. It seems like yeah. they've done fine, at least yeah. from what I've seen. I think so too. I think they've done really good. That's a lot of experience for us. So, as you go to commissioner meetings and other counties, do you hear comments from those commissioners on pros and cons? We've not really talked about that. Mm -hmm. We could probably start it, you know. Hey, you want to do it more? Oh, I, I'm, I'm, not saying it's, I'm not saying it's a need on your part. You probably don't have yeah. other issues, but it's just kind of be nice to get feedback. Yeah, we're supposed to have another regional, Northeast Kansas regional. At, at Manhattan next month. Yeah. Maybe next month. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Or there be the 10 mm -hmm. counties there. Mm -hmm. And not to say, I mean, as you well know, there's personalities within commissioners and within counties. <laughs> Sometimes you ask the right question and then that hits the little button over here you probably don't need push at the point in time. But if there was ever yeah. that casual commissioner's report, well, you know, our extension yeah. district has been developed or we just gotten into extension district or we've been in the extension district I don't know, three to five years and this seems to be what they are observing. And like you say, Jeff, yeah. as far as when districts get formed, commissioners are very little informed, involved as far as the finance. I mean, they're not. So it gets to be that change of how they do business, so to speak. But still, commissioners are aware of what's going on in their county and their district. So, okay. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah. You're, you're right, though. There are some counties where commissioners are very. They want to keep the power, they want, mm -hmm. they want to control the power. Mm -hmm. yeah. But how can you say no? And even though that it hits your little button there. <laughs> what do you want? Coffee with it? I'm going to call them up. That's better than that. I'll send them up. The sheriff's yeah. yeah. probably got some of the stories down here. Yeah. Uh, I personally don't want to jump into a huge already formed district. Form, you know, which makes sense because uh, you could all pull your ideas where they didn't have their ideas and you take our ideas whether you like them or not. Yeah. I and, and I don't think it's like that, but from the very beginning that is one thing about districting that concerns me is I want to know that our representation is really committed. Because if we get into a district and we have people that aren't coming to, going to board meetings and that kind of thing. I just, yeah. I want to know that our people that represent us in that district are really committed. Well, that would be a good question on districts. I don't know how they set it up. If it's like a number of representatives on that board by population, it's, it's or is it just four, by it's, it's four, four per county? Okay, now yeah. no, that, so, that eliminates. Right. Yeah. So, so probably one of the disadvantages I see of a, you know, four or five counties, then you have all of a sudden you have a four members. So, you for five counties, you'd have a twenty-member board, and getting those all together. I mean, you'd have to always have eleven members. Too big of a district. Yeah. And another question comes up too is what is the status of county fairs, you know, because that that's something that people don't want to lose control of, and that doesn't, uh, in most cases, doesn't change that. Yeah. Uh, you, your county still has their own favor, so yeah. We've got fair boards, and the yes, extension stays involved. Um, and as even the concept of districting has been uh, started from the beginning, that uh, it probably is with the idea that fairs uh, Stay pretty much status quo as you go into the district with very little to no changes to fairs and what do you call them? Sacred cows or whatever. <laughs> well, fairs in each county have been protected and that's not part of the extension as such is what it stays with the fair board. Well, and it's an identity thing. People associate and identify with their county fairs, so that's, that's important that they realize that's not the <coughs> And I say that, I guess. That's probably just based off of Eastern Kansas thinking. If I was in a Western Kansas, and gosh, if your exhibit numbers were hitting them, so few, if you knew like a regional fair. I just don't know. No, I don't know. But the GMA, if those, all those counties out there, maybe what they do with no bigger population they got, they still have a very strong attachment to their own little region. I'm sure, case they would probably know. So many extension may know that. That's a good question. Yeah. I've never heard of any regional fairs, but I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean like in yeah, liberal, there's a regional fair. There's some across the 
state. I mean, it's a five state there, but that's been history for uh, forever. And I was going to say, and then you get Camp Osage County, for instance, is in a district, but they currently, in their community, I think, have four or five little community. I mean, they have a county fair, but they have community fairs too. And so those are just kind of managed. I mean, there's that 4 H involvement with the youth division. Then there's rules, and you work through those. The, the adult side is strictly fair board, but you kind of, I mean, you work with them and work, recruit volunteers and partner with them. I think you really want to talk about a regional fair and how to get to That's probably one of those things that you got. Yeah. Like, work in the fairs are on the table, so it's mm -hmm. Maybe a rotator or yeah. something. Well, any even fair. Have to be down the road. Any even fair dates. Uh, you potentially. Well, if, I'm just saying if, if um, Edson County got in the middle arc, we would be on top of Jefferson County as it sets now. So to say you got into a district, does that make a difference? Probably not, unless there's that, unless there's other reasons that you change fair dates, which quite frankly, our fair dates sit by the carnival. You need to move, you need to move it up two weeks. <laughs> it a, I mean, for both involved the school and youth, it would not be a bad deal. And truly, we have moved up one Potentially one week from what we were, but when you look at Leavenworth County, they're a week behind us, and they would, I think they would love to be. We were a kid, we were earlier. Like we were always later. Yeah. Oh yeah, we've been later. We used to be. Yeah. I can remember one day there was kind of like a week between state fairs. Yeah. I mean, it seems like we always hit the we hit elections, primary elections. Well, right now. Yeah, because it's the first Tuesday. Fair officially opened on the first Tuesday. Of August for that full week, and that would only follow your election. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. You see how, you see how those fair discussions just jump right into extension <laughs> <laughs> so quickly and so easily, but you probably like consult like fair board. I mean, you'd be talking a whole mass of. Because you don't, because the. Fair board is the entity of themselves. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so they were. I don't know what they would even say. And so, I mean, even in Metal Arts, just to get one point in time, I think. Nemaha finished the same day that Jackson started and Jackson was finishing as you know Jefferson continued. But then as you look, I mean historically then like those counties have two agents and so you just operate fairs kind of same thing. So interesting. And then I wonder what happens to like clubs, I wonder clubs and, like do you do clubs get fewer in number or four H clubs do they oh. From being in a district or not in a district? Yeah, you with that district, you don't really think it was fast. Uh, there's possibly some that are maybe close on a county line boundary, maybe could, but for the most part, I don't think you're going to see that huge change. Yeah, you see that there's that self sense of that kind of local ownership, and so it's probably agents that cross the county line. I mean, and some I see more ag crossing the line. Family consumer science, I don't see as much that crossing of. Line sometimes it's just kind of how you're. On the other hand, you know I've done some food safety things currently as an agent just because I'm that trained one here in Northeast Asia, Kansas, and so I will pull in find you know that regional pool because that's a little specialization I just acquired over the years. So. I know that there's some Ashton County families that go down to the government. They're in the Silver Shore issue. Yeah. 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 There's some move Jefferson County. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's, uh, I mean, membership, families have the choice to go out of their home county. Oh. Do you think if you went to districts that you'd get more involvement from the kids in the city? Would that be a possibility? Let's say that again. If you went district, you'd get more like kids from Madison or kids from Memphis getting involved in it? I would hope so. I mean, quite honestly, I mean, the county fair, as late as it was, historically really hurt probably Atchison membership because if kids were in school that was if people even though 4-H is all year round it should be an all year round program some people see it as that fair or don't get to participate the cherry on the on the Sunday and I mean I think in Atchison now where the opportunity is ripe it's probably some after school programming I think there's interest in you know currently I'm trying to work with Carrie Sowers and it gets quite frankly then it gets down to manpower I only have 24 hours a day and sometimes I really need 28 to get those extras. But yeah, I mean, I 
hopefully you could do some expansion because if you do 4-H right, we yeah. should be seeing some That's really the whole thing. good yeah. results that are addressing some of you know the health issues that we talk about. If we can improve, if we have more ages to diversify, hopefully the quality of your programming will come up that could maybe expand that would attract more in, in, in uh, urban areas versus rural areas. But it's but just two ages or one hand, it's, it's difficult to do right now, but you might be able to expand that. So. Be good to see. You know, I know we struggle with our kids, we try to limit them to like one activity, and it's like, I was a 4 H, I know what the time is. That's, that's where we struggle with. It's like, we make them choose like one activity, but it would be nice to have them. It's something that 4 H on the state level kind of just, you know, we have to find a volunteer opportunity for your job. Is they're looking at kind of spin, you know, and they'll spin there. It's spin clubs, so there's special interest clubs, but they're a little bit more short term, and then you can do several, but you might do a GPS club, or you might do a rocketry club, or a food club, and do a little special interest, and kind of combine some of that club meeting into um, that spin club. And I always kind of equate, not a healthy example, but I always use it as I can buy a small Snickers Halloween bar, or I can buy a big king size bar and hopefully, I mean Bill's boys were in 4-H and did that king size experience, did the lobo and that kind of thing, so you take away lots of life experiences, but I think there's really value if you do it. That's, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Earth, you can go 55 miles per hour on. I mean, I'm, make, I'm reading it different, but there's no way. If anybody ever try to go 55 there, they're not going to make it. I don't know, you walk a ravine or a ditch or something. Yeah. One of the problems that is to, to really do a traffic study, you have to have an engineer. You have to treat each one, consider each one individually. And now, I, uh, Brian Clark asked me something. He said that they could do some things. Like the Kansas High Patrol or something like that, because he was asking about some speed limits. He knew we were. He'd ask me a question about it. we're doing some stuff with speed limits, and he said like he said something like the Kansas High Patrol has some programs that you could do. I thought it was at no cost. I don't know what it was, but it's something like for safety well, testing yeah. on how fast you should set speed limits. But he said something to me, but I don't know if there's any more detail if you want to. If you see him next time or yeah. He does it actually like the he said the kids have control with that stuff that they they go and they do something like that. Otherwise, you can get like if you want to get detail, you get traffic counters and you get traffic counters with radar. So basically, you just set it up shop for like a week or whatever, mm -hmm. or whatever meeting that they cost. You have to run them. Like, so like Mocan has one. I think the Mocan Regional Smart. There's a couple of others that write those out. But Yeah, just do St. Pat's area there is where I was starting. I think everything else looks pretty decent. We're red 40. Oh, there's a couple others that came up. Sedgwick is 45. That <laughs> goes to 55 when it's for hours. <laughs> and you don't want to go 55 there. No, that's like a There's a lot of accidents with that. Or once you get up over that first hill on the gravel, those ditches are death traps. Once you speed in that uh, easy to come, it's not going to get you too late. Time out, two back door. 55. Yeah. Do you have the name or number? Yeah, I'm going to pass none. So, Pat, this is maybe a dumb question, but like, are we like liable if we say like it's 55 on? North Oaks College is North Oaks Road. We say it's, it's 55 miles per hour in North Oaks Road, and somebody we gets in an accident, and they said, "Hey, what the heck were you thinking? 55 miles per hour was probably about 20 or 30 miles over what you should do. Are we in trouble?" You, you can still, I think, ride for speed greater than for greater reason. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, we didn't set it at 55. 
statute says it can control oh, rates that are unmarked. You're right. Um, okay. But that was kind of the point of just having a blanket lowering it to, you know, to say 45. Then you really need to check to make sure 45 is a reasonable speed on all of those stuff. We didn't set it at 55, and I think we we have protection under uh, uh, under Kansas Tort Claims Act for that anyway. And we do like the kids up here on 314th Road off Sedgwick that wrecked here with like six kids in the car. Up there. We wrote him for that same thing, you know. It's feeling 55. We, we still wrote it. 314th and Sedgwick was in 55. And that 314th that goes on the gravel back there to that. Yeah, that's not gravel back there. No, but it's paved. But it's way too fast to go around this curve back there. I mean, oh, yeah. I think there is a yellow sign here that says curves or something. But the 286 must be 65. 65? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like that's what everybody got. Uh, 286 roads are good thoroughfare. They don't pick up any nails. Yeah. Yes, that's not a, a question that I had. Just that neighborhood's church. Yeah, it's a center of this 45. It's 286 gold the old highway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there any on there, though, like from Fremont? To Pratt Road, where we're slowing it down. So we'll Dispatch on that. That's about to go. That's another good one. If you're going 55 down through there, it's people do. So if people come. What road is Fremont? Fremont's like a, where Brad Bottoff Bob used to live there. Mark Denton was up there now. Yeah, I was surprised there. I thought I'd seen some signs up there. Like Matt put one up. So I'm, we asked Matt if he could put one up. He said, no, not without resolution. Well, then one popped up. 35. The 35, but it's going from 55 to 35, and there's no sign to say, hey, get, get ready to slow down. Um, but it would be nice to have just west of there, uh, on top of a hill, like uh, there, reduced there speed. speed limits. There is a reduced speed, but there was. <coughs> but when you're coming out of the state limits, they're coming out of the limits on, that is Pratt Road, isn't it? Before it turns 286. Yeah. According to this, it says 55, but I know there's a speed limit sign on there that does not say 55. Pratt Road is 35. Well, that's not even listed on here. We're probably better. Yeah, yeah we when you come out of the city limits, where? Uh, top of the hill, past BFW. Like where it goes. Dr. Jones' house. Yeah, Dr. Jones' house. According to this, it says 55, but I know there's a speed limit sign, which is 30 or it's just 35. No. no, no, that's well, it ends like the state limits end right, right about there, right around that, that corner. Mm -hmm. it's, it's posted 35 all the way to um, well, that could be well, country club, ED. I mean, well, you know, right. Right. yeah, perhaps 35 the whole way through there. I think that could probably be a uh, club road shows 55. Urban There's no way that you posted 30. Yeah, there's another right there. Which one? Okay, so Country Club, Country Club Road. The Country Club officially ends at that we're Pratt Road intersect, and then it turns into uh, is that Pawnee? Pawnee or Osborne? Yeah. Pawnee looks like it turns north. Yeah. So from the city limits to Pawnee Road. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think we need to keep Country Club Road 30 all the way to, to there, uh, up to Font, uh, so to that intersection, or there's a hard curve, I think Pawnee ends, and that kind of goes off like this. You probably want to take 30 all the way down, because otherwise people are going to... So all the way down to where Pawnee, where you go straight on Pawnee, and then it keeps going left. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, like right at the water tower. Or 
Yeah, so you take that big curve and you're going down that hill. If you keep going straight, that rock road is Pawnee. Mm -hmm. And then if you go left, that turns into Ottawa oh, again. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, once you get there, I mean, it's curvy enough. I don't know. If, but yeah, I'd be afraid to get a 55 going down. Yeah, that's pretty. I guess it, may be, it might be already posted or something. I'm not sure. I know there's speed limit signs on Pratt and, um, Country Club. and Country Club, but they're not listed on this map at all. Because I know uh, Herb Wired was complaining quite a bit years ago, and then they got posted down to 30. Because they were just flying up through there. So there's no resolutions by the place at that time. Well, I mean, it does say urban district, and I think that could be an urban district. Yeah, so sure. We definitely need to get it down just so we. So that's 30. You're saying 30? I, thir 30 yeah. uh, or 35. I mean, it's 30 down through the sports complex, and I'll just keep it 30 going all the way out. 30, it's heavy residential. So from Country Club Road, from Grandeur to Pawnee, is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. What, what's that? Is that country folk turns into uh, these are at Grandeur what with uh, Scott or Harris the carousel one is that? Oh, that's uh, 290. I think that's Township Road. I think. But it, yes. So is that 290 from Pratt to Pawnee? Or does it turn into Pawnee? No, it's Pawnee and then Pawnee will keep going straight. Uh, do you know where uh, Joe Weber yeah. So that's well, I'm talking at Pratt Road though. Is that Pawnee there, or does that turn? Is that Pawnee? According to this map, it says Pawnee, but maybe it is too Pawnee. I think it has to. We have to turn in. Well, it wouldn't have to, I guess. No. Yeah, this one doesn't show. It's too Pawnee at that by where the airport is and Country Club Road is in. I can't remember what it is. To be honest with you. We can get a good map here on things like that. Yeah, yeah that's the uh, speed limit for folks. That's what I'm looking at. It for some reason, I thought it did turn into Pawnee back here. That's, that's, a, mis uh, that's a misnumber, too, though, technically. The Urbans, uh, I could show them 290 on this. Ron Urban's parents lived out on the Country Club Road in the area. Yeah, there's yeah. a Country Club Road, it wasn't 290. Well, it's at least Country Club until you hit Pratt, and I don't know what it does. It says 290. It says 290 on there, but it's showing 290 all the way to Granger. Or it's more. Somebody ought to go through there here in the next day or two and see what that shows on the 911 address. Oh, like Molt. That'd be uh, on top of the signs. What Molt is out there? West. That West Molt? Yeah.
290th to that shirt back in the pony. I probably go on the over the stop sign and you do it this way. You can't you can't even get get it going that fast to fifty five by the time you gotta turn the curve with the hair yeah. and the hair forward from the front. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the hairs are right over here. Yeah. Yeah. Does that kind of be the idea where well, I have Country Club Road from Grandeur to Pawnee at 30 miles per hour, and then the issue about whether it's Country Club Road or 290. Yeah, and then you've also got Pratt from Country Club Road to Salem's. Salem's, uh, Jones House, yeah. yeah. But I also think, you know, coming back on 286, it would be nice to slow it down by uh, Fremont to like 45 and then you get to B&D or something, go to 35. Which road is Fremont? Fremont goes is that kind of shortcut between Pratt and Trey Oh, okay. Which one? It's not Marco on here. Oh, uh, well, I don't even about But it's a, the little one of those two three lines. Yeah, Rick Bromley and his mom lives up there. So I yeah, I thought he was also on here. 286 is 55. Is that reasonable? Yeah. I would say somewhere right in there. There, there already is a, a reduced speed head sign, but there was never any in between the speed in D&D. There so many feet passed. And then there was a 30, 30 or 35 sign put up, but there were so many weeds around you couldn't see. Well, if you make it like past Fremont, wouldn't that be reasonable? Like. Yeah, with Fremont, 50, so west of Fremont, like 55, and then east of Fremont would be on 55. What time you get to Fremont going that way, probably, but coming, to, coming back in. Well, that has to be 30 then, too, because if you're coming out 30, you would assume you'd go with it 30. 35. Probably was 35, man. Right then. But didn't we just say 30? No, I'm going wrong. Well, I thought so, too. I don't think we have a 35. Oh, we don't have a two year 35. Not that we couldn't have it, but I mean, it, yeah, it's just. I'm per, it may be 30. I don't know. So that basically that you're going to have like a reduced speed limit. You're saying, but a reduced speed limit. There already is one. There already is one, but there, we need to kind of step it down because it goes from reduced speed and you get up kind of close to BMD or whatever it is now, Heritage. And it says 35. Well, you're going from 55 to 35, pretty hard. Uh, it could you could switch to a 35 ahead or, or 30 ahead or something like that. Yeah, would be a good. Idea. Uh, but people come around that corner by Ganell, Gary Ganell, and walk over there, just hauling you know, coming back to the dump. I know the other day talking about the dump. Well, there was a lot of trash on the road. Do we have our crews go out once a day, once a week, twice a day to pick up stuff that's falling off the trucks? Because there was a bunch of stuff from the old highway to the going up that road. That's something I have to ask for that. You don't road crews do their own. Well, Ken, I would say you don't road crews have to. I know Deffenbach has to maintain 435 so many miles down there for their dump. If we don't have that place, we need to have it because there was some plywood and some ticking forwards and there were six or seven pieces from the old highway to the scales. Kind of like going up the wrong route. Somebody had a whole test blade and assembly on the low road. That's right by Larry Clark's. Don't take out somebody or something.
couldn't wear it wasn't there yesterday, but he at least called it in yesterday. So we call it in every day.
I'll probably get more some work, but I guess I do have a few. Get more work. Get more work. But, um,
So far, all the discussions um, have been internal to the extension board. And we identified three areas that we need to focus on for districting programs. And we looked at programs because the variation in our age groups the education level and the diverse needs that are coming into also outcomes because if we're going to district and we go through that process and become a tax entity, we're going to have to be able to clearly define outcomes that we're meeting and that it is benefits. And then the third item is financial stability for the county. We also identified several lists, um, and just three of them I'd like to mention is the time and funding needed to identify change, because I think if we go into this routine, it's going to take time and to identify the needs and the programs, the effects on the program, also for recruiting volunteers. Um, and the third, I think, is very important is leadership capability for those that are involved. Then we had uh, came up with several recommendations. To
put a hook in that mail room in there, or we, we could leave them locked up, or I mean, it's up to you. What, how, I don't know how your guys, who's going to be using the vehicle or anything like that, but we could you know, take the appointments, kind of like we do for, for up here, you know, if somebody's going to use it for training or whatever, and write it out, yeah. write it down on the list. I think we just don't want to designate it to one area. We want it to designate it to the we figured if there's somebody that was out of town and came back for a meeting or something like that, I mean, you know, not everything is, is usually open. There's usually somebody, or, you know, there's usually a way. There's always somebody here. So yeah, yeah. to at least get in, at least put the keys, deposit them, and check, there, check them back in, I guess. Mm -hmm. We thought maybe in the mail room would be the best place because the, the jail staff could still get in there. And if you guys came in wanting to sign it out, you have your key access as well. So. Got the secured area back there. You have to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, we can take that. You know. Don't forget to work. Somebody called us and said, you know, we're going to use that vehicle on such and such day. We could write it down on the list and leave it there. Do you remember your vehicles for inventory purposes? And we have them. Purpose. We we have them inventoried by the. Uh, license plate number, basically. It's the kind of easiest way to track it uh, that, I, that we found. Yeah, usually every year we require um, inventory audit submitted to uh, to uh, Pauline. I don't think we got one from the Sheriff's Department last year. Did you guys, when you guys were going through everything, did you guys basically take any type of inventory of... We're still kind of working on that, just the fact that the we have an inventory list that has anywhere from a paper clip holder up to a car. So uh, some of that stuff, which paper clip holder is it? You know, I don't know how much, how detailed are those inventory lists. I don't think it's paper clip So probably like vehicles, computers. Yeah. But I mean, you might want to put your cameras on there. Yeah. Probably the, the minimum dollar amount, I would assume, is what I wouldn't think any office material like pens or papers or that That's, uh, I mean, that, that, that's just what has always been that way. I think, like, you know, all the ch chairs and tables and even little filing slots and stuff have the stickers on them. Oh, okay. We were kind of thinking about maybe reducing that down to more. That's probably what Susie picked up, wasn't it? Wasn't it the one? The stickers, the isn't that a sticker on that? The silver the stickers, yeah. yes, yeah. just like that. I mean, you should have stickers. You should yeah. have a sticker on your stuff. Yep. Yeah. I don't have any. I mean, we there are certain things that do, certain things that don't, but we're we haven't really gotten to a point of total inventory yet, but. We have an inventory of what the officers have and then what the vehicles have. And so you should probably set that threshold like a minimum dollar amount or anything X value enough that's five hundred dollars or if it's on up or I don't know if that's reasonable or you know, then just just things like a switch box in the vehicle can be over a hundred bucks, but they can go out tomorrow too, you know, and you have to replace it. And it's just, I don't know if it's worth it. But wouldn't that be part of your vehicle? You your It would be part of the vehicle inventory, yeah. But like some of the old sirens that are pulled out of some of the other cars that we sold, they've got the stickers on them. And they're weathered, so you can't see what the number it is. So, the light bars, same, same thing. Oh, you're actually going to be good, but. I yeah. thought I thought it would be just like the whole vehicle that would include the light guard. Mm -hmm. I, I would think so too. That would just be one. Yeah, but I think Jack's talking about more spare parts, aren't you? No, well, not necessarily. That's just the way it was done before. I, I mean, when I'm tearing the vehicles apart, taking the lights off and stuff, I've noticed the stickers on some of these things. Was it busy taping on them? No, when that happened, I always thought that was told. Well, we had to. Um, if we don't wave, we need to do the waving. You don't wave that um, gas um, thing, then you have to do a fixed asset, which you have to account for all of your, your buildings, your land, your vehicles, anything. There's, you know, things like uh, 
those old radios would probably give me box of old radios if they had stickers on them, you know, that they have been used since before that's probably before they narrow band probably so those were like really old radios. Well, we didn't have we used those out in the election board to make sure it's the right telephone or cell phone. Yeah, so those were good. We, we do have a statute, KSA 19 2687. Uh, each county officer and head of the department or office of each county shall make a personal investigation, inspection, and inventory of the kind, amount, and location of all personal property owned by said county. Inventory shall be sufficient identifying description of each item of personal property. Shall be done month of December and have filed with the county clerk on Iowa for December 31st. Such inventory shall not include the books, records, files, stationary writing material, and blankly the papers contained in the various county offices.
We pay rent to the Effingham City Building? No. no. We don't. We pay um, to the library, to the churches, Heritage Conference, and we pay. Well, for this 377 election? Oh, well, for the 377, we don't know. You would pay rent to anybody? Um, okay. I gotta think who I'm all. I pay cash. Down there, I pay. Um, I don't pay for the fire district. I would probably just not bring it up and nobody would ever say it. I mean, that's my opinion on it. For this, for this election? Yeah. But when you mentioned it, I thought maybe you, that should be something that I'm looking at. The least amount of publicity you give it, the better. Because I know the Secretary of State's office was saying that they were going to give a kind of general opinion on it. We just can't say any more than the plan is in the work that's not completed yet. We don't have to give them a copy of the plan. We have to tell them that we have a plan. Uh, I don't think saying, and the plan is going to be four years from now we're going to buy mail collectors and hire a guard. That's a plan. Uh, I got a feeling that four years from now this will all be a lot of talk and nothing about it. And I have something to do with it. Four years ago, whole change in the administration of legislation. That's what Essence talks about with KC and other counties. I mean, our plan is to do what the rest of the county's plan is, and that's nothing. Except for Cedric Johnson and. Douglas, probably. Douglas. Sean Eden. Sean Eden. Well, well, so did so did uh, John. Did John decide to be special for the administrative building? I think they were going to make it a, a secure. I don't know. Well, they said that there some of their some of the buildings they were concerned about. The yeah, they were going to make it more yeah. secure building, not accessible yeah. to the public. And then, I don't know about yeah. the uh, you're right with the public aspect of it, like the dispatch center stuff like that. Uh, yeah. October 8th, we're going to have the uh, speed, mm -hmm. speed limit resolution. Res the speed limit resolution, so hopefully by October 8th we can all kind of agree on some of those. Plus, 30 mile an hour is not still in the drums yard up there. On. I noticed that. That's all true. Okay. I forgot about that. There's the current resolution says like the 275 yeah. feet. Yeah. It, was, it was in the right spot. I don't know why pulled that. This is on Rollins Road. Not too bad. Between hey, are you still on the first? Is that 266? What is that? 276? 276. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's also a misnomer. Oh, two. Yeah. 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 The sign got moved. I haven't looked on Sherman to see if we changed. Those have been moved. Those have been good. Good. Yeah. Very much as close to that. Okay. For a while. For a brief time. Um, and that would be the fourth, right? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. But anyway. Uh, the only thing that I heard from people were like that stretch well, on 266 between uh, Ottawa well, and 59 Highway. Can you do that on Thursday? There were some concerns about, I think it's uh -huh. the map showing like pr proposed 45. I thought it was supposed to be like 30 or. Where I'm sorry? Uh, Ottawa and 59 Highway on so Hook. So yeah, you see Second Road going there. And there was some, there are a couple people, people neighbors that are concerned about the speed limit. Well, the the talk was 35. Oh, okay. And then uh, I don't think we ever really decided what to do on But you see, I think Matt told you the same speed. Yeah, he said it was like 73 to 59. It was like 45 miles. 45 miles. I can imagine 55 right now. But I know, know that it used to be marked at 30 or something yeah. a long time because it's a school bus area too. Yeah. That's residential. I don't. I think 35 people still go 45. But, um, the trouble is you get too low and the people well, do 45 and then we call. Call. I'm not here for trouble. We're still doing 45. We're still doing. Or you get too low. We'll get that everywhere. But man, I don't. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll have to look at it. 
Yeah, it does. It's 45. 45. Yeah. It's 45 now? That no. Proposed. Yeah, that's proposed. Uh, so basically it's 45 all the way from okay. an Ottawa from 59 to 262nd, then you go east on 262nd okay. to okay. 59. It wouldn't, it wouldn't matter if we put it to 35, but people aren't going to go to 35. No, so. I think one of the biggest complaints is the, the grain trucks. This is the biggest problem. Don't go over and harvest. They won't see the 35, which I can understand that. Pretty <laughs> times, At least that stretch between 59 and Ottawa seemed like it was. I know what you're saying. I mean, there's stretches in there where people are going to do it, but going 45 down that. Of that neighborhood probably would be pretty fast. I would think. Yeah, and our, talking about taking that stop sign there t out too, right? That yeah. Way. So I mean, that's going to even make it worse. So. Is that going to? are taking the uh, stop sign out at Ottawa, though, are we? We're going to make that four-way stop. No. The, the, well, the proposed, the proposed you engineers. You like to change the stop to the other way. Yeah, stop, stop on oh, Ottawa, so two fifty seconds, like all the way that's through. Me. That was Mr. Bennett. I think it's a mistake. I think we'll have a ton of accidents there. And that's, people are so used to that right there. I, I turned it to four way if you're going to do that. Okay. If they're not going to have a flashing light or something. There. Well, they talked about putting a flashing. That They they talked on both sides. They were going to put something flashing ahead of it. Possibly there will be some other safety measures. I, the, the engineering safety study was, was in it because they were. They talked about further west of there to that T intersection. I don't know if that's Osborne. Yeah. Osborne, if you go further west of there, they're gonna make the they're gonna make the stop signs on um, or east west. I think they're gonna go on east west. And so then because right now it's not. North South doesn't have stop well there's no north. Yeah, but I think if you go if you're coming west on 262, and you blow through there at Ottawa, you're going to have to slow down to go any slower. To, and that's 55 to there, and it's going to drop to 45. But I mean, you know, that's a residential area right there. It wouldn't hurt to be. Because this map shows 55, basically, on that bracket. Then it would be reduced down to 35 at the. No, it would be 55 and then. Um, it shows for, proposed a 45 on that stretch from Ottawa all the way to 59 Iowa, 267. Shouldn't it be simpler just to have a 40 or 45 or 73 all the way straight through? Or is that too fast out there? It's not too fast, but I mean, it's going to be 40 mile an hour and all the way People go a lot faster than that. Yeah, what it's doing. Uh, that's a big stretch from, from Ottawa to 59, or 73. Yeah, 73 to 59. There's not much there except a couple of houses. Mm -hmm. On that road there, um, that's not supposed to be used for through traffic. I don't think there's a. It's not supposed to be used for commercial traffic on the way out. Yeah, other than that, that's it. Yeah, through commercial traffic. So the grain truck shouldn't be used. Yeah, unless I bridge it on the road. road. They're not commercial. Right. Unless they're custom haulers. I don't think it's used that heavily by. I don't think so. That's what the complaint is. Oh, I think. Basically, yeah. there's been a couple of instances. I know I use it when I'm my semi. I mean, it makes it nice, and there's several that use it. Yeah, you're very smooth, probably. Well, but I don't have a jake or anything. He wouldn't be. Certain and I don't go that fast, sure. Bottom line, that's. Well, there's semis that go through there, but I think it's mostly. There's quite a few that go through there. You've got Merlots, you've got services, and then you've got. Sherman 30 from basically it looks like the water that treatment plant all the way up to the sea limits. Then it goes to 45. I think between Ottawa and, and 59, it wouldn't hurt to put it at 35 or 40. I mean, that's being all those houses there. I mean, you don't need some kid to run out there or something. No, I was right there over here. No, they live east. They live east on 267. His uncle. Yeah, oh yeah, my 
that. When you appear down this time, we're just. Yep. Okay, yep. you're awful from there to 59. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so to that quarter. There's been, there's a lot of homes there. There's a fatality there at that corner there a few years ago. I can't remember, it wasn't that long ago. Somebody plowed through the intersection, I swear, I think the woman got killed. Oh, I don't know, the 260 section. It wasn't that long, it wasn't that long ago, I don't Yeah, I can see if we take that stop sign out, the semis will be going 55 right through there, just blow on down to 59 in that way. Mm -hmm. And then just leave it. Because it shows on here that proposed that 45 go then goes from intersection of Ottawa to 62nd all the way to 59. The work, well, basically they're both hitting 59 but going north to 59. So basically, he'll top that whole stretch. According to this map, it shows 45 proposed for there. Yeah, there's a 30 sign there we never found a resolution on. I think yeah, that's right by the airport or somebody. Yeah. Finally put it up. And there's not too many people go 30 through there anyway, so. So leave it at 45 through that port, and then that. So basically from a 260 second from Ottawa at 59 make that, you're saying? I would suggest a little, I mean, I, I don't remember what the discussion was that day, but I, I think that the, being a, that's a pretty good residential area, and good. Near the Warnock entrance. 
Um, now I think it's, I don't care about the rest of the road itself, but the, around that entrance has to be cleared. We got that whole road cleared. That's what, well, well, we do. We've also got Phillips now, too. That's not what's going on here. There's no key with that. You, can't can't speed. you really can't get up going that fast down that hill or up the hill. So, I don't think that would be. Did you read that article on speed limits? I got yeah. from North. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. It was very yeah. nice. Like, it just doesn't talk about it's like the western and the eastern half of the state. Or I feel like as you went east, which makes more sense, more densely populated, the speed limits trended down. Is that right? Yeah. 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 They said on these cars, 75% travel below the speed. Well, I like, I mean, they didn't really say where they did that study, though. I mean, no. You can do it out in, like, little Clay County or. You know, I can't imagine there being. Well, they would make a difference here in Ashton, too, if you did it, you know, by, by Lancaster or by mm -hmm. the Scope. River Rush. This is just crazy. North Rush Road is like considered 55 miles per hour.
Is that really 330 when the uh, extension's coming? Chris Kirby, 330. I thought that was her letter. No, Chris. Chris Kirby. Oh, I'm looking down below. I'm looking on first. Yeah, be in. Thursday morning at Solid Waste. Solid Waste Committee will meet. Executive Committee discuss. Um, so you have to however proceed with this. So. And are we going to make a recommendation for funding? I, I believe so. Yeah. So that we should be funded. We were supposed to host the one we had to ask for the answer. 
doesn't mean labeling. We haven't had one since exchange money. Right. So we hosted the Weyerhaeuser Group. Yeah, we did. I'm pretty sure that they had the uh, MGP Casino comment on the box. Yes, because I had to go pick it up from Jerry the Gibb. That was one of the MGP. We needed that one. Yeah, and the Exchange Bank. I think the first one we jointly did something. Okay, so yeah, it would be us because the Exchange Bank was the city bank. How about the first one when those guys come up and talk about the trash they got kind of hosted?
sent us a copy of a pie chart for the architect, is it? Yes, and he talked to me about that uh, as well. I, I want to do a little due diligence, I think, before uh, recommending it. Mm -hmm.
department supposed to have their list that they, they give to Pauline every year? You know, some do and some don't. Is that right? Yeah, we had trouble with them. We had trouble with one inventory list last year. I can't remember what it was. I think what he's sharing is inventory for quite a while. But you didn't get any last year? I thought we finally got it, like we. I bet they got inventory stuff together now because they, I think they went through like everything. You think they changed over? You think they want to have a list of what they took over? They're going through an awful lot of stuff. It seems like they get some stuff away that's outdated, and I thought they just kind of get the list together. Now I know there's some uniforms that can be burned. I don't know what you classify that as. Property destroyed or excess property destroyed. That sounds to remind us next time the sheriff's up in the morning. We can ask if he's working on it, if he has it, or if he needs to work on it. I thought they were going through much. I thought they were going through all the inventory in January, I thought. Nothing in there for sure. He comes up today. We don't have to have a hearing every time we do the bond, do we? The bond payment. This is for the... The sales tax, of course, the sales tax that comes in. There's a certain dollar amount set each year. This is dealing for maintenance of both the two ball parts, so USB 377 and the ASAF is the Ashton Support Story of Fitness. That was the corporation set up for the ball parts here at Ashton Support Story of Fitness. Is that quarterly, Pauline? Quarterly. So that would be the fourth quarter. How many years did maintenance? The maintenance was different. Was it maintenance for 10 years? Was that 10 years from when the bonds passed or when they were built? I can't remember. It's one of those key dates. You were what, five, six years in at that point? It's a series 2007, I assume. Up on the top, there should be a number that says 2013. 23. Request number 23. Pretty close to the top. Four to six years. Six years. Yeah. Not quite six years. I don't think it might start in the middle of the year, too. I don't know. That's the question I was asking. I'd have to go downstairs and see one. Okay. Is there any authorization to sign? I'll authorize. Do you have to sign? Bond trust? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you, Brady. Well, and that was okay. kind of a comment I, I had, too. Uh, well, I probably take a vote. We need at least one plus an alternate, unless you want to be the alternate. Right. 
In those minutes, Pauline Megan, Commissioner Jeff Shea, Commissioner Mike Bodenhouse, and also the citizen and the Oh, okay. Thank you. I can't see Mike wanting this, and your insurance. I think you sat it on the desk last week. Oh, that's if you have a nomination. Mm -hmm. John was what? John was on the board for. He was going there for a while at least, wasn't he? Yeah, a few years. You think this is something we should wait on or something like that? Act on or what? I don't know. I think it just happened. No, this is a different. One. This is where you're on the board, correct? Yeah. Just to nominate somebody to be. Um, to the oh, board. not just for the meeting? Right, just to nominate it. Is there a deadline? Uh, I don't know. Is there a deadline? The meeting is not totally the third By September 30th. So, you don't have a meeting before then? So, I would say you can go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, 
it's been a few months ago, I think we, we emailed them to kind of find out what their, their plan was. Um, I don't remember what their response was. Can you give another copy of the sign sheet? Which one? The one that you just handed me. Oh. Oh, is that? Oh, hold on. My, I, Phil's got one. Yeah. Okay. We wrote in our names on the full one. Can
is that what the current or the, is that the proposed? Those proposed times. Proposed. So uh, I think you could set it anytime. I don't know whether you guys have gotten any feedback from people about it or not. I haven't. Uh, the only thing I heard, well, I mean, you're talking about the same areas. I mean, uh, between 260, what do we suggest like, between 262nd? Uh, 262 between Phillips and 59 Iowa. Was that reduced? Uh, I don't have the map with me. I don't. <laughs> okay. It was. No, there's people over in that neighborhood. I don't. I thought it was on one speed. Well, we put 45. Well, we put 45. I'm not sure. I don't know. I can't remember. remember. I can't remember exactly what it was either. That one and then. Sherman, and they'll do things that I've heard about. So, okay, you said 262nd Road. Yeah, yeah between Phillips and or no, I'm sorry, Ottawa and yeah, 59. Let's see, it's 262 between Phillips and 59. I don't even know if we had a reduced speed limit in there. 45 miles per hour on Ottawa Road from 262nd to US 59. 45 miles per hour on 262nd Road from US 59. Right, that's the same thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So that's one that's on auto. Oh, no, one's coming this way and one's going that way because 59 is in an angle. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so 45 both ways off of 59. And Sherman Road, 30 miles per hour on Sherman Road from 266th Road on the south to the city limits of the city of Atchison on the north. And 45 miles per hour on Sherman Road from US Highway 73 on the south to 266 per hour on the north. Which, if we did send those to the city, that would even like concern us anymore. There's an area there uh, where if the city annexes property, you can notify them that they didn't take the road. And, and of course, they, they took the, uh, the cave. We, we would have, so they, they have frontage along the way. So um, I've asked Roger to come up with the uh, legal description of the road through that area. Uh, uh, and I guess it would be up to you if you want to notify the city to request that they annex and take over that road. So basically, to the end of the, uh, the wastewater treatment plan. Uh, to the uh, Yeah, right, yeah. To, uh, Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we, we need to send notice. Is that what? It, yeah. Okay. They officially annexed all that in. Well, they, yeah, they just the annexed that. Okay. okay. They, the other parts were on the end, but the cave just very spare. Okay. I guess we probably need to send a notification. Do you send that, or do yeah. you need approval by commission? Yeah, it needs approval from the commission. I asked Roger to come up with the. Oh, so you want to wait until you have that before? Yeah. You. Okay. 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 So, what did we decide about the speed limit? So, are we setting it on a specific day? We do it next week or the following week? Okay, first or the eighth? Just the eighth, that gives people enough time if they really want to give input, I guess. Okay. Do we need to set an actual hearing? I mean, do you have to have a hearing for that? No, it's just a resolution. No, it's just, I would just put it on the agenda for that. Okay. Let's okay. say 1.30. Do we need to set 1.30 on the 8th of October? For speed limit speed resolution.
You can get started on that bridge down there now, Creek. Yeah, um, I've got the permit from a white on iron. I called uh, Oscar Steel and um, they haven't gotten back with me yet, but that's what we're waiting on materials right now. Hopefully, we'll have them within a few weeks, but waiting on callback for that. Then you guys are working on still on River Road. Yeah, I've got one crew up on River Road and I've got another crew up on uh, um, Osborne and uh, 298, putting in that culvert that we purchased for that uh, small bridge up there. Uh, okay. so. I think I've mentioned this one time before. Uh, the, the statute on commission meetings says that you're meeting on the first Monday of every month. That can be changed through a charter resolution. Um, there, there's been a little discussion about it. I'm not sure that we're out of compliance because nobody shows up on Monday. There's just no quorum and no meeting. And so the next, just whenever the quorum will show up is when you have your meeting. So, uh, but it, it's probably. Uh, cleaner to go ahead and adopt a, a, a charter resolution, which just gives you the authority to set your meeting date by simple resolution. Uh, and we maybe we're a little bit out of order because we we switched to the Tuesday meetings without having that without having that done. But um, I would like to present that to you next week. But I, I have it now. I have more copies, but I have the resolution ready. For you to, uh, for you to consider. Yeah. I also mm -hmm. do a mm -hmm. Yeah.
they didn't do the road. And I don't know. Uh, Raven Hill Road, if that in the city, that probably won't work. Yeah, there's like a chunk like right around that corner, basically. All the way down to the end of the lake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They should have took that too. They want to keep the crap in the That's a joke. That's a joke. Now that already is in the city. Oh, that's already in the city. Yeah, that's how they jump around about that. Well, if you looked at it from above, there was like a, a half circle that was missing. They had everything all the way around it. So the wastewater treatment program plant plant has right. always been mm -hmm. oh, I see. And the, the elevator behind it and yeah, that, that's already there.
county do anything like a case commissioner both now his dad passed away or do you just do your own I got a family flyer that I'm gonna send but I didn't know if the county as a whole did anything or